I have never, in all the years of being a coin dealer, part-time and full-time, have I ever owned and bought in a two-week period this many gem silver dollars. And I'm talking Mint State 66. I have a 67. I have some nice 65s. And I mean coins that will knock your eyes out. Not only that, I also have some type coins that I want to share with you. So let's get started in looking at these coins because you don't want to miss it. First off, I want to tell everyone that these coins are either on the website for sale or they've already sold. Uh, some of them might not be up yet, but we will get them up this week, I promise. So anyways, this is a 1922 Mint State 65 piece dollar. Obviously, it has a little bit of a mark there, but otherwise it is really a nice clean coin with a lot of luster. Just almost all white. I mean, it looks white to me. Not the look that I actually like when I'm looking at the piece dollars. Then I have a 23. It's a Mint State 65, and it has the CAC sticker, which is a lot of people call it the green bean sticker. This one has the die crack down here and up here. And the thing about die cracks is that they don't add value, but they do help you identify the die pair that struck these coins. In other words, helps you identify the VAM. Now, sometimes if it has a nickname or it's a hot 50 or top 100, it can add value to your coin. This is a very nice coin. Like I said, all of these coins are pretty nice. So you're going to hear me say that a lot. I'm going to be probably repetitive. Now, this is a 1924 Mint State 65. Now, if you are a peace dollar collector and you look through enough peace dollars, then you would know that this is exceptional for a 1924. Even though they're a common coin, a lot of them are grainy, not well struck. I got an off look to them. This looks like a very nice gem 1924. Has a little bit of toning, modal toning on the reverse. That does not take away from the grade of this coin at Mint State 65. Then I have a 1924, and it's another 1924, of course, and it is uh, Mint State 66. And it is another example of a coin that is just choice for a 24. You can still see that there's a little bit of graininess to the surface as typical for 24s, but as far as being a nice struck coin with the luster, you know, it is exceptional. Well, very well worth the grade that I'm seeing here. Here is a Binion Mint State 66 classic set. Not even sure if I've shown this in a video or not, but I wanted to include it because it is a 66 that I bought recently. It's a very nice coin. Must have came in a set where you bought 63 of them. I can't imagine how much someone would have paid for it. But here's the reverse. It was a very nice coin, though. Here's a 1923 Mint State 66. And, you know, like I said, there are 66 plus, there's 66 minus, and then there's 66 right down in the middle. This one here looks like it's on the upper end of 66, uh, whereas the Binion was a little on the lower end of 66. But, I mean, exceptional quality on these coins. I mean, they're very premium quality, what they call PQ. And you have this one. And it's a 1925 graded Mint State 66. It has a little bit of toning on it, I see. And I do apologize for some of the plastic. I did take these to the Chillicothe Coin Show because I bought some of them last week. But man, it's been something else the last two weeks of, of what I've been able to bring into the coin shop. I might as well become a rare coin dealer that keeps it up. <laughs> so that's the peace dollars. Now we're going to take a look at some of these Morgan dollars. And this one here is an ADS, Mint State 65 proof-like. And, you know, for a 65, that's a really nice coin. When you look at this, this 65 and you look at some of the 66s, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference. I mean, it is really splitting hair sometimes when it comes to one point grade. It can be a mark here or there or just anything that could, uh, you know, keep it from becoming a 65 plus or a 66. And I do have some 66 pluses. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of the plus grades, but we do have some of those in here. And speaking of 66 pluses, here we go. Here's an ADS, 66 plus. Looks like it has some semi-proof-like quality to it. Very nice coin. And here's the reverse. And for those of you who are new, who do not know, the mint marks on the Morgan dollars are down here, right in between the D and the O and above it. It's a little bit closer here and take a look. One of the things about, and I've done some videos on counterfeits, is that you're looking for the fonts. The fonts of the letters and the dates can be different. Uh, if they're fakes because they're re-engraving, trying to make them a rare date. So we use common date coins to make the dies. So you have to be careful with that. Then we have an 82 CC, which is, I mean, <laughs> to see a 66 82 CC. I mean, how often 
do you see that? I mean, you have to go to the big shows or might might be a dealer just have one in their case, but you just don't see these very often. I mean, they're just, hey, this is just really nice. This is one of my favorites out of the bunch, and there's the CC. A lot of times the position of the CC, uh, how it's tilted or shaped, uh, orientation towards the wreath and the bow there, uh, it determines what die pair or actually even help you identify the, whether it's uh, authentic or not. And you want to learn to do that. You want to learn the coins that you're buying. I've said that and I'll say it over and over and over. You need to know. It's very important. And then you can buy safely. Here's a Mint State 66 plus 82S. And it's not as strong to me at, for a 66 plus, but it has the luster. But like I said, you're, you go through coins after coins and you can compare them side by side. And so a lot of it just comes down to an opinion. If you like the coin, then you buy the coin. Like I said, a lot of people say, you know, buy the coin, not the holder. Well, you're going to have to do that. Fortunately, it's the way it works. They're not always right. This is a nice Mint State 67 coin. And you are seeing these coins larger, so the marks look a little more obvious. They're really not as obvious when you're looking at these coins in hand. But we are looking at these under some magnification. I mean, we're talking almost as large as your screen or half as large as your screen. And here's an 83 Mint State 66. But it does give you an opportunity in one video to see multiple 66 coins and 65s and 66 pluses and see them side by side. And you can kind of compare and you can judge for yourself. You can pause the video, compare your coin, hold it up to the screen. Uh, There's just all kinds of little things to do just to learn and look at the details, like I said, of each coin. It doesn't have some contact marks up here. Then that's, that's another thing. I want to show you this. A lot of people ask me, what is that on that coin? It is a contact mark from the reeded edge of another coin. You can see some of the reading. That's what that is. That's what happened. Another coin banged this coin. And you get marks like that. You see it often. I see it often on coins. Here's an 1883-0 Mint State 65 proof-like. Coin has a little bit of cloudiness and toning to it. You can see some of the proof-like quality there behind the haze. I'm not a big fan of hazy proof like coins myself, but some people do like these and it is a nice coin. It has some contrast to it. And here is another CC, but it's a Mint State 64 to an 84 CC. This one, I'm not sure if I've shown already in the video. It's not as gem quality as the rest, but you do have looks like fingerprint marks on it, but it doesn't really distract from it. It's not that kind of uh, marks that, you know, look bad on the coin. You don't really notice them until you're looking at it in all this light and looking at it larger. But you can see down here, there are like a little bit of a die crack and that'll help you identify and help you, let's put it this way, help you authenticate. Knowing those little details on a coin helps you authenticate the coin. Knowing which mint marks they use. If you go over to Van World, it shows you every mint mark shape and orientation that they use for these. That'll help you identify it. Just, it's just buying smart. It's just getting smart, educating yourself. My videos on counterfeits are not to discourage anyone from buying. That's not why I do those. I do it because I warn people about Facebook ads and buying coins that are less than melt and thinking they're getting a good deal. It doesn't happen that way. You want good coins and you want a good deal, you need to just go ahead and find you reputable dealers and sellers. The 1884-0 Mint State 66, very nice coin. Yeah, I like this. I like the um, patina. It has a little, it's not as bright white as the others, but I do like that look anyways. Either way, I'm not against a little toning. I just have my preferences on what pleases my eyes a little more than others. And here is a 1896 Mint State 66. And you know, when you look at these coins, uh, you know, it's amazing how they survived in this condition all these years. People did not spend them. They did not want them. They sat in bank vaults. I know my dad used to go to the bank and he would buy the rolls of them. For face value, pick out the CC, sell the CCs for 3 and $4 a piece, and take the rest back and get his money back. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, I know some people are uh, watching this, my channel, uh, saw this happen. They experienced it themselves. But it still amazes me to think that. Nobody really wanted these. Uh, this here is a piece of Jessamine State 66 Plus. And, you know, some of them did circulate. They circulated out west at the saloons and casinos. Some of them did the S mint marks and the O mint marks. You'll see a lot of those that are more rare. If this is a 96 O, it would be worth a couple hundred thousand or more. I mean, it's hard to tell if there's even one graded 66 plus. I haven't really checked that population on those. But a 96 O or a 96 S would be 
unbelievably valuable. It would be unattainable for most collectors. But this is a very nice looking coin for a Philadelphia Mint. Has a little bit of uh, toning on the reverse. And here is another 19, 1898 Mint 866. And like I said, the S Mark version of this would be worth a lot more because it circulated more and you don't find it in the MS grades very often. When you do, it's, it's rare value, much rare value. It's what they call grade condition rarity. A coin that is worth more because it's graded higher is a grade condition. Then I had a 19040, and this is a Mint State 63 proof like, and I'm bring, putting this in here just because it's proof like and a well struck 19040. Even though it's only Mint State 63, it's still a nice coin. I and mean, you can see a lot of the details of it. And a lot of times these are struck really weak. And then this one here, and I'll tell you right now, I have never purchased a 1921 Mint State 66. I never have. And here it is. And a PCGS holder, Mint State 66. It seems to me I've had coins that look this good. <laughs> but I sent it off and I probably wouldn't get 66. Maybe if I sent off a bulk submission and buy a bunch of them and see what happens. But yeah, that's a nice coin. Never purchased one. 21 and 66 before first time then i have a nice trade dollar let's break it up here 1877 s pcgs very fine 30. that's a really nice looking coin all original authentic like i said you'll see the dates will be off on fonts when you see these faked uh counterfeited the the details will be off the mouth will be open when it's not supposed to be or there'll be something wrong with it joys there'll be something you'll see that'll be off about it 18980, and I'm showing this one in 63 because DPL is the same thing as uh, Dimple, DMPL at PCGS. NGC just has a little different acronym for it. Well, this is a pretty nice coin. And here's the reverse. I like the reverse a lot. And here is an 1887 Mint State 66. It's a nice coin. Looks the grade. Has some marks on it, but like I said, these coins are going to have scuffs. What they what's absent from a lot of these coins is though they may have a mark in an area you think they shouldn't for the grade. They don't have all that little chatter all over them. I mean, I showed you the 60, uh, this one here. I showed you the 63. You see the chatter all over the fields? The 66s don't have that. That's, that's one of the differences here. Very clean surfaces. They didn't get nicked up and ticked up a lot. And we have an 88 Mint State 66. And like I said, it's kind of exhausting. 66 after 66 after 66. Um, a person brought these in and another dealer sold me some of the peace dollars. I mean, it just uh, amazes me how, how I've, I purchased all of these and just love the coins. It, but this makes it fun when you see all these coins like this and I can look at them and, and it helps me even grade better myself. Then here we have another change up. I think we're through with the 66s, but I want to show you some of these type coins. It's a 1908 S, Indian Zen, Extra Fine 45. And we'll try to look at it a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit better to get the light there close to it. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm getting a lot of new subscribers. The S mint marks down here. And you have to watch out for uh, fakes, especially for the 1909S. The fonts of the date, uh, the mint mark will look off. Sometimes it'll look grainy if they use spark erosion to create the counterfeit. You have to watch out. And here is an 1899 New Orleans mint AU50 quarter. Barber quarters, is what they call them. And it's a little darker, but it is original coin. And here's the reverse. And for the new people here, new subscribers, here's where the O mint marks at or the mint marks out on these. It's a little off center to the right. A nice coin there. And then here is a standing quarter, 1917. It's the second year. 16 was the first year. And you know this is a type one because of the fact that on the reverse, there's no stars under the eagle. If you look at type twos, they'll have the stars. A lot of times you can pick out no dates. And if you get lucky, you might find a 16 if it doesn't have the stars on the back. That's what you look for. A lot of people found no dates. I found a no date before that was a 16. There's other details about the obverse though that you need to know before you think you have a 1916. But those 1916s are very rare. This one here is an older, what they call soap bar. And it's about the size of one that you find at the hotel room. And it's an ANACS. And I say Annex. I know that sounds like Annex, but it's Annex. And some people say Anax and Annex, but it doesn't really matter. It's all the same token. You can see what it is right up here. <laughs> Extra fine 40. Pronounce it how you want. So this is the 24S. Very nice coin with the mint marks and, and back in the 20s and earlier 27s and all of them. Uh, with the mint marks, they're a little more valuable, especially when you get up, you know, in the very fine range. Extra fine range. Then we have a 
barber half. It's a 99S, fine 12. You can see some of the Liberty. That's the whole key here. Look at the olive leaves and then start looking at the Liberty and that's the fine 12. You start seeing more Liberty, it gets up to be the very fine. You have fine 15. And there's the mint mark here, same place. Then you have a 1907. It's a very fine 20. You can see more of the Liberty. So this all helps you grade when you're comparing coins and looking at these. It's another thing you can gain from these videos, hopefully. And then here we go. This is the one that I wanted to show everyone. It's an 1806. Extra fine details because it was a little clean. It's a, a 50 cent, obviously. It's a half dollar. It's the 0.6 with stem, which means the you know the point of the date. So anyway, this is a nice coin. It's the Overton. It's O-116. Overton was the one that mapped out the die pairs for these, cataloged them. Uh, you can see the die crack here, and it helps identify which variety it is. It's kind of a darker coin, so it's hard to see underneath all that, but you can see the how it looks. It's a, that's a die break more than just a crack there. You can see a little bit of field displacement there. You know, that's, that's pretty common. It, it happened on coins. It's not a rare thing. Um, but like I said, some die cracks can add value as long as they're breaks and they have nicknames and things like that. You can see up in here, some looks like some tool marks. When those are absent from these, then you know that the coins might be fake. It's possible that it's counterfeited. But I wish I could show it to you a little bit better, but it's just a darker coin. But it's unbelievable. 1806, and it survived in extra fine detail. So that means it circulated probably half its life as, you know, it got pulled from circulation. And that's very close to the beginning right there, 1806. A lot of history for that coin. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did because I really enjoy showing these coins. I love looking at these coins. I'll look at them again. I mean, I, I just... It helps me, I, and, I, and it's art to me. And, there, and also, not only that, it's, it's eye candy, to say the least, but yet you get a chance to see coins that you never see very often. I don't see coins like this very often. I mean, I can go to a coin show and look at them through the glass case, but to handle them, to own them, to you know, preserve them as far as put them in people's hands, because these were obviously sold to me because the person no longer wanted them. So now I'm the caretaker, I'm the broker. I got to find homes for them. So like I said, PorsuitCoinShop.com is my website if you want to check these out, if you want to purchase one of these coins. I appreciate everyone watching my video. I truly do. Please, if you like this video like this, hit the sub button and the bell to get all notifications. And above all, have a great day.